This man is a champion. His name is Mike Powell, and he owns the world record in the long jump. In 1991, Mike soared 29 feet, four and a half inches, nearly 10 yards, breaking a record that had stood for more than 20 years. When I came to the stadium, um, I knew I was going to break the world record. I had thought about it all night. I had visualized the whole jump. I had even visualized what I was going to do to the crowd after I made the jump. So I went there with the purpose. Mike Powell is still the number one long jumper in the world. And while he still works hard to break records, his main focus now is to stay ahead of the competition. I used to be caught up on how far I was jumping because people would say, well, you didn't break the record. And I'm like, look, I broke the record once, and the record was broken. It took 23 years for it to happen. It's not going to happen every day. So for me, now, um, you know, I go for the win. When the wind is right, when the track is right, when the competition is right, when the crowd is right, when, when the ions in the air are right, when everything is perfect, I, I just try to get myself in the kind of shape where I can take advantage of the moment. The kind of shape Mike is in combines a smoothly functioning heart to pump oxygen-rich blood around the body, large and pliant muscles to send him soaring high into the air, and beneath it all, a solid support system, the bone. To build the perfect long jumper, start with the 206 strong, light, dependable bones that form the human skeleton. Bones that are heavy enough to withstand a pounding and light enough to get airborne for a moment or two. Simplicity and strength in an elegant design. Outside the bone is hard and solid, but inside it's porous and light. It is a design often copied by architects when strong but lightweight construction is required. The electron microscope reveals the individual bone cells connected by thin, wiry tendrils. But bones are more than support structures. Inside, they are alive, constantly building and rebuilding themselves. There are nutrient channels throughout the bone. Here is where the process of renewal takes place. Bone, when it is first built, is soft cartilage. As it thickens, it gets darker. But while new bone is being made, older bone is being destroyed. This is a bone-eating cell at work. It is estimated that the skeleton is completely rebuilt every two years. After age 40, the bone-eating cells begin to get the upper hand, making bones in older people more fragile. Not that Mike Powell has to worry, yet. Now I'm 30 years old, and 30 is not old by any means, but for a long jumper, it's what they call um, experienced. <laughs> and I, I use that experience. Well, er everything that I do in my training, I try to make sure that it is specific to what I do on the, on the runway, and that's long jumping. All the weights that I do are, are very specific to running down the runway and jumping and landing. The running that I do is very specific to the kind of run that I do on the runway. With the pool, um, I do a lot of things in the pool concerning the long jump. I, I do underwater jumps, practicing my jump. I, I run in the pool and do drills in the pool. Um, after the season's over, I may have three months off, but I'll play basketball. You know, I've been known for, for dunking, dunking on people and just dunking <laughs> on anything. <laughs> so I, I kind of get that, that residual effect year after year of training. So now my, my fitness level is at its highest because I just, it's like I've been training for 10 years now. Much of Mike's specialized training is geared toward the muscles, the moving parts that provide the body with the capacity for motion. 
All the muscles of Mike's leg are made up of elongated cells with energizing proteins that give them distinctive light and dark stripes. Skeletal muscle is enclosed in a membrane. At its ends, this forms the tendons, which attach muscle to bone. A cross-section reveals the individual muscle fibers inside, like strands that make up a rope. Surrounding these fibers is a network of connective tissue, nerves, and blood vessels. Closer up, we see a system of tiny vessels that store calcium ions needed to trigger muscle movement. In the fiber are the muscle proteins, actin and myosin. Shown as pink and white rods on the screen, these two proteins tug and pull each other. When repeated across the millions of cells that make up a muscle, this microscopic action gets the body moving. As an athlete, you have to know your body so well. My, my body now is at such a, a finely tuned level that I have to be careful with everything that I do. I can't run out and just go play basketball or go jump over a car like I used to <laughs> because any little thing can throw it off. I just love it to be very precise about what you do. Like for myself, I, I know when my, when my heart's not beating right. I can tell when my heart's beating too fast. I don't have to try it. I don't have to test it. A double action pump of ingenious design, the heart is the engine that drives the human machine. The heart and its network of blood vessels keep every part of the body supplied with a steady stream of life-sustaining oxygen. The oxygen enters the bloodstream through the lungs on either side of the chest. The heart takes in this oxygen-rich blood through the left atrium, the top left chamber. It flows down to the lower chamber, the left ventricle, and the ventricle pumps the blood up and out to the body. Emptied of oxygen, the blood returns to the heart through the right atrium, passing into the right ventricle which pumps the blood back to the lungs. These tendons on the heart's inner walls are attached to muscles that contract to regulate the amount of blood flowing through the heart. Valves open and close. Blood enters and exits, creating a familiar rhythm. But what keeps the heart on the beat? Even when taken out of the body, an isolated piece of heart muscle will pump without any signals from the brain or the nervous system. Here's another. And another. But how can all these muscle cells, each capable of independent action, work together in the heart in perfect synchrony? The secret lies with the heart's spark plug, the sinoatrial node. Called the SA node, it is located at the top of the heart. Its signal is picked up by the AV node near the ventricles. Left to their own devices, the muscles of the heart would only beat about 40 times a minute. But the SA and AV nodes send out electrical impulses that synchronize the beating and boost the heart up to a more normal speed about 70 beats per minute, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Here, we see the entrance to the coronary artery, where blood enters to fuel the heart muscle itself. Fully 10% of all oxygen taken in is used to keep the heart pumping. Any muscle can cramp if its oxygen supply is cut off. For the heart, a cramp means a heart attack, the devastating result of a blocked coronary artery. 
This is the top of the heart looking down through the aortic valve. Here is the entrance ramp for the blood's main highway. Oxygen-rich blood is launched up and through the aortic arch, setting out for every distant destination in the universe within. The first set of exits off the highway lead north. The opening on the right leads to the arms, while the two openings on the left will carry 15% of the body's blood supply to the brain. Passing this interchange, the road turns south. The two lights at the end of the tunnel lead toward the legs. The side roads above and below supply the abdomen. Blood that makes it all the way to the end of the road, the feet, branches into countless tiny vessels. The body's best attempt at keeping the toes warm on a cold winter's night. The hands, too, are shot through with tiny blood vessels. The fingertips are particularly well provided for. The electron microscope reveals another intricate net of blood vessels, this one supplying the tiny cochlea of the inner ear. Though only the size of a pea, this sound-sensitive organ is one of our most important links to the outside world. What attracted me, for me, I, I look at myself as like almost like an entertainer. So when I'm out there, I feel like I'm entertaining the crowd. So as opposed to trying to block things out, I'm trying to encompass everything and bring everything in. Like, okay, everybody watch this over here. Watch what I'm about to do. Representing the USA, a two-time world champion in the long jump, ladies and gentlemen, this is world record holder Mike Powell. Mike's machine is tuned and ready to follow the orders sent out by the brain. I, I think about trying to jump out of the pit, and after I get that emotional charge of what I, how far I want to jump, I, I then just go through my technique. I have different phases, and I go through my walking phase, and my drive phase, and my sprint phase, and my takeoff phase, and then my jumping, and I, envis I visualize a whole jump in my head, and then I land, and then I hear the crowd, and then I go and I go do it. Mike decides to move. His brain sends a signal to the nervous system, setting into motion an amazing series of events. Here, a muscle cell appears as the dark streak running down the left side of the screen. The thin hair-like structure to the right is a nerve. It reaches out to make contact with the muscle. In this electron microscope view, the nerve cell has been dyed yellow. The nerve is the brain's communication link to the muscles. The more points of contact between a nerve and the muscle, the more efficient the communication. When Mike decides it's time to go, his brain alerts the appropriate nerves. The nerve stimulus arrives at the muscle in the form of an electrical charge passed along through a chain of chemical interactions. The problem is to transform this electrochemical impulse into physical movement. It's a trick the body is constantly performing. In less than a thousandth of a second, the nerve impulse spreads across the surface of the muscle fiber and dives down into its interior. There, it releases stored calcium ions. These calcium ions instantly alter the chemical environment of the muscle. Just as lightning sends an electrical charge through the air, the calcium sets off a chain reaction, sparking the proteins actin and myosin to create movement in the muscle. And now for his last jump, Mike Powell. Jumping with a sore hamstring, Mike is not likely to break his record in this track meet. Going into the final jump, he's in fourth place. But even with his body in less than peak condition, a champion has his pride. 
I love competition. And I love to win. And that's, that's a lot of motivation. And um, I have a good time at whatever I do. So I have fun when I train, I have fun when I compete, and I have even more fun when I win. The jump is over in the blink of an eye, but a look in slow motion reveals the champion at work. Muscles, bones, heart and mind working together to produce an explosion of power and grace. The human machine striving to perform at its peak. Yeah.